I want to apologize in advance for the long post. Writing this is therapeutic for me. We've been together for 14 years, married for seven, and have two young kids. My wife has struggled with depression, which worsened after having children. I did my best to support her, taking care of the kids, giving her space, and more. I was always there for her, and my family thought I was being taken advantage of. She was grateful for my efforts. We had milestones we thought would improve things, like when the kids grew older, when they started school, when we bought our dream house, and when she went back to work. My wife got a great job, and they supported her fully, taking on more responsibilities with the kids and offering advice. However, her boss at the big company had a reputation for inappropriate behavior. He made questionable comments during her hiring process, which made her feel stuck because he was the one hiring her. Three months into her new job, she remained depressed and stressed. She blamed it on being busy. When I got COVID and needed her help with the kids, we had a fight and she suddenly claimed we had lost our connection. After she visited her family for a birthday, she returned and casually mentioned that she needed time away in an Airbnb to find herself still citing the loss of our connection. I tried to improve the situation by doing more with the kids, giving her space and making romantic gestures, but she seemed distant and preoccupied. At work, her boss also stopped talking to her, apparently due to a personal tragedy involving his daughter's death. Two weeks passed, and I had to go abroad for a long weekend, because my grandfather was dying and wanted to see me. Her mom came to stay with us and help with the kids. He continued messaging, including staying in romantic messages, and things seemed to be improving. But until within half an hour of my return, she insisted we go for a walk and dropped the bombshell that she had to leave for a few weeks to find herself. She said there was no point in couples counseling and that it's over for now. She felt confused, citing a lost connection, and I was left hurt and bewildered. The next day, I sent an email about logistics, considering we have kids. Also asked her to confirm that there was no one else, as it couldn't understand the rapid changes. That night, we discussed the email and logistics. I pressed for an answer about someone else. Electively, she admitted having feelings for someone, going on a few dates, then kissing, and eventually they had CX once before breaking it off. She wouldn't reveal who it was. We separated the following day, and she went to a hotel to find herself. We used our anniversary hotel points for a local Marriott. I sent her a list of questions seeking clarity. She left a lengthy voicemail expressing remorse, her struggles with depression, and confusion about whether the affair was self-destructive or logical. Besides of Dax for Prochester Eustracy, I responded to the email thanking her for the voicemail, but pressing for answers to my questions. She replied the next day, confessing it was her boss. It happened two months ago, and it was over. I her my brother came to support me, and two days later, I straightforwardly asked her if she wanted a divorce. Within an hour, she replied with a yes, followed by a I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Thirty minutes later, this brings us to the present. I'm deeply devastated, hurt, angry, and a mix of emotions. 
excess. I feel used and worry about the impact on our kids. Despite our efforts to minimize it, she, having experienced her parents' divorce as a child, went through with it in an incredibly short time. She never expressed unhappiness with our relationship, only that the affair made her feel something must be missing. So I'm starting the divorce process. Any thoughts or advice are welcome. Thank you, everyone. I just talked to a UK lawyer, and I'm feeling really down because she still has all the control. We have to start the divorce process and then wait for five months before we can secure a legally binding financial agreement. She can change her mind any time between applying and the end of those five months. Even though she's in the midst of an affair and says she won't take advantage of me, she could easily change her mind and leave me in a difficult situation. Thank you, everyone. We've reached a financial settlement that's favorable for me. She's still deciding whether to accept my pension offer, feeling guilty. But even if she does, I'll be okay. What's really bothering me is that last night was her turn to put the kids to bed in our home, where I usually stay away to avoid confusing the kids. Happened to come home a bit early and overheard her on the phone talking to her affair partner. She sounded like a teenager in love saying things like, Can't wait to see you again. Just putting kid two down and then I can come meet you. I miss you, all during the kid's bedtime. I confronted her afterward. She claimed it wasn't as bad as it seemed, that they were just talking and he still had a girlfriend. She even said she didn't mean to fall in love. But she lied straight to my face about not planning to see him when she had mentioned just ten minutes earlier that she wanted to meet him that night. I'm incredibly angry and frustrated. I agree with informing the girlfriend after the divorce is finalized or at the very least, once the financial settlement is sorted out. The problem is, I have no way to contact her. He's so old that he's not on Facebook or any social media. I also agree that telling her would provide some closure and further confirmation that she's been cheating and lying. It's just really painful. I'll do my best to maintain no contact, but it's tricky considering we have children. Thank you all for your valuable feedback and comments. Since I can't respond individually, I'll try to address everyone here. First, I want to make it clear that I'm not engaging in a pick-me dance. I've read, and I'm confident that I have no reason to feel guilty for her affair. I've been a great husband and continuously supported her through her struggles with depression, especially regarding spending time with our children. It was never an issue for me. Things are less stressful at home now that she's left. We've tentatively agreed on a financial settlement, which based on the 50-50 standard in my country is actually beneficial to me. I want to use the affair fog to my advantage, but also my family has financially helped us a lot and she can cash in on that, which she feels guilty about. So, I think we have a fair settlement if she doesn't change her mind, perhaps due to influence from her affair partner or another boyfriend. I'm trying to take care of myself and the kids, but it's challenging especially dealing with episodes and flashbacks. Overall, I think I'm doing okay, thanks to forums like this one. I'm struggling to eat, which is helping me shed some pounds. However, I did pick up smoking again, which is stupid, and I need to quit. 
I had a therapist, but I let him go yesterday as I felt he was pushing the reconciliation idea when neither of us can even consider it. She's still with the affair partner, so I don't see how that's an option. She's moving out properly on Friday, and I think that will be good for me. I've removed all pictures from the house and scheduled a deep cleaning for the day after. Somehow these actions helped me cope. Overall, I'm still devastated, of course. My life was perfect less than a month ago, and it all fell apart so quickly. I don't think she's remorseful. She seems to believe this is her true love, as she told me she's never had feelings like this. I'm very sad that she's disrupting our kid's stability. I'm sad that I apparently didn't really know the person I was with for so long. I feel like dead weight while she's out there living her life to the fullest. I briefly tried Tinder, etc., but had bad luck due to unflattering pictures and being slightly overweight. This motivates me to keep training and getting back into shape. Thanks again for all your input. Thank you again for your posts. She moved out last Friday and acted very cheerful and business, as usual throughout the process. Even when I handed over some of the more emotional items from our marriage that I didn't want to keep, like the wedding picture book or our fifth anniversary present, she remained composed. Towards the end, she got a bit sad and suggested a hug, which I declined. I know from mutual friends that she seems incredibly happy in her new flat, especially since it was her birthday last week, and they were there to celebrate. It's somewhat ironic, because her father mentioned to my friend that he was the same age as her when he divorced her mother, so perhaps it's somehow hereditary. Anyway, I'm still going to the gym and doing my best to take care of myself. Having the kids back today after their time with their mom is a real boost for me. I miss them so much. I received an interesting response on Reddit that I wanted to share for anyone who needs to hear it, and it aligns with what you've mentioned. She's ended up with a repeat cheater who had no qualms about sleeping with a subordinate who was married, so she'll realize he could do the same thing again, whether the woman is married or not. Likewise, he knows she threw away a perfectly happy marriage and cheated on her husband, so he may not trust her either. It's a match made in heaven. I still have my low moments, but the no contact since she left has been really helpful. I'm fortunate to have a nanny who picks up the kids after school and then either brings them to me or her place, so our contact is very limited. Again, thank you for your insights. This forum has been incredibly helpful in my healing process. Oh, and I've found a great new therapist. Our first meeting is...